Hello everybody and welcome to the AOR F1 2016 Season 12 Championship. My name is Justin and today we're at the Sepang International Circuit in beautiful Malaysia for the 16th round of this 21 race season. As I'm sure everyone has heard by now, my beautiful commentary partner x G has been scooped up by WTF1 for a new YouTube channel that's just been launched as of this past Thursday and we're sad to see him go but wishing him the best of luck in his new endeavors. Enough about that though, today I'll be joined by a new commentator for the league and his name is Ali. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Malaysian Grand Prix are always extremely exciting, and obviously with the threat of the intervention of rain at any point, it should be an absolute cracker, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Yep, glad to have you with us. There has been a lot of precipitation in this season in general, and as you mentioned, Malaysia is one for that kind of weather. Last time out at the Singapore Grand Prix, it was mixed conditions, as we've seen, and very challenging for most of the drivers, but the Flying Finn took home another win after a nearly 60-minute long race, while TRL Martin and Sayariu completed the podium. In the championship, Finn is now enjoying a 78-point lead heading into the Malaysian Grand Prix, where the forecast is for rain during qualifying. So let's head over to Fizzy for the side-by-side -side comparison and Ali for the full qualifying report. Welcome to the qualifying comparison here for the Malaysian Grand Prix, this time on board with RS Falcon in his McLaren on the left and AOR Raikkonen in the Ferrari on the right. Wet intermediate tyre conditions as you can see, so we're heading down into turn 1, braking just off the 100 meter board, trail braking a little bit even as you get the car slow down the apex, staying close to that curb for a long long time before flicking it over through turn number 2. The exit out of air is very very tricky to get on the traction, the back end constantly wants to step out, especially in these conditions so you really have to balance the throttle and the upshift. And then there's going to be another heavy braking zone into turn number 4, getting it turned in nicely onto the apex and as you can see from this point in lap is very very close between these two drivers but uh, Raikkonen slightly ahead. Turn 5 and 6 coming up, two corners that are very fun to drive, although in these conditions it might be a little bit frustrating because the car really does understeer a lot through these kind of corners in the wet, but it seems like both drivers have managed to take a decent line through there. Now heading towards the double right hand apex of turn 7 and 8, crucial to get close to both the curbs and then getting nice and early on the traction for the uh, sort of medium length uh, run down towards the hairpin of turn 9. Downhill braking, very easy to miss the braking point and go a bit too deep through here, as the Ferrari driver has actually done and with a Falcon though hitting the apex beautifully and he's now slightly ahead in this particular battle, drifting like a madman up the hill. His Falcon as he now gets his car pointed in for the difficult apex of turn 11. It's hard to spot that apex, you kind of need to know where it is. And then turn 12, which is easily flat out in the dry conditions, but in the wet they clearly have to do major lift. And then a very tricky braking area for the penultimate corner here, going wide on the entry to line yourself up for the best possible exit, which is crucial as you now coming onto one of the two biggest straights on the circuit. One of the two where you'd normally have DRS, of course, in the dry conditions, but none of that's in the wet and now they wait for the braking zone for the final corner just between the 50 and 100 meter boards getting the car turned towards the curb and then it's about balancing the throttle out of here again try to avoid a curb on the outside just to make sure and then across the line we go Artis Falcon will be P10 on the grid with a 147.289 whereas Raikkonen is at three positions further down despite them being only 13 thousandths apart that shows how close it is in the midfield here in the qualifying for Malaysia Thank you Fizzy for that qualifying comparison and now looking at the grid for the Malaysian Grand Prix it's going to be Tiara Martin who lines up in pole position alongside the championship leader the Flying Finn in P2 less than a tenth behind the pole time. HCR Cupid four tenths back in P3 with Tiara Limelitz up in P4. AOR Reverso has a strong qualifying in P5 with the other championship contender CRU in the Renault in P6. The other Williams of STS F1 Alonso will line up in P7 with Mike Marshmallow in the other Sauber in P8. Andre and RS Falcon round out the top 10 with Franklish in P11. Y comes in P12, AOR Raikkonen in 13th. The other Renault of Bernard F1 in 14th. The other Haas of Lucky Dog 2000 now in 15th. Sierra Hamilton in the 16th, Six Skills in 17th. Jason 97 F1 in 18th. Reserve driver IRL Giovinazzi in 19th, Leo Bot in 20th and another reserve driver of Maurizio Alonso, the last person to set a time in qualifying with snow at all, unable to take part in the session due to a quali ban, but let's go and see how they all get on in the race. Welcome to the grid here in Malaysia where the clouds have opened up and the heavens are weeping for what will be a very wet start to this 16th round of season 12. It is really coming down out there. We've seen a lot of precipitation 
uh, through the course of this entire season, and it looks like Malaysia is going to be no different. 50% chance of rain should mean that it's going to be wet for at least half of the race, which is going to make things very difficult for all of the drivers out there today. 15 corners, 28 laps for this Malaysian Grand Prix. And you have to say, Ali, that it's definitely looking good for the Flying Finn going into this race with a 78-point gap. Yeah, the championship is obviously his to lose at this point. And with torrential rain, there is obviously potential for a spanner to be thrown in the works. But as always, he's up there in P2, right on the back of Tyrone Martin, who took a fairly impressive pole position. But he has a massive chance once again to take a, a win or at least a podium or a very solid result. So I wouldn't be expecting anything else from the championship leader. But on board with Wycombs, he's on intermediate tyres, which is... An interesting call. We saw at the start it was going to be 50% chance of rain, so it is going to dry up. So I guess when you're outside the top 10, you're free to take a gamble. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. And it's not one personally I would go for, but I guess we'll see how it works out for him. Yeah, he, I guess he's just going to roll the dice here. Uh, it is getting to the tail end of the season, and the Force Indias actually have had their ups and downs all throughout the season. Some really good results, some really poor results as well, some bad luck. Uh, has plagued them in the past, but all of the drivers making their way to the grid now uh, as mentioned TRL Martin on pole with the flying fin the only driver to get within a tenth of him And then it was another three tenths back to HDR Cupid who joins the grid once again and uh, Tierra Limitless actually in uh, in fourth position in qualifying good job from JD as we prepare now to go racing for again a very very wet start we've got four lights we've got five lights engines are revving we're on board with Sayariu the championship contender it looks like a fairly good start for him AOR reversal up ahead of him Limitless in fourth position getting a very good start looking like he's already trying to think about going up the inside in between Cupid and the flying fin Martin though with a fantastic start a little bit of lag there possibly for the Mercedes driver but he has pulled off into the distance although Cupid closing in with that inside line through the very long turn one and then cutting across uh, I think he had the flying fin alongside of him. Oh, and the other Mercedes has spun, and there's contact with the Ferrari of Jason 97 F1. That is definitely going to slow those guys down uh, at the back. And it looks like Wycombs holding on in uh, P12 on those intermediate tires. So oh, reversal making some contact with the other Williams of S STS F1 Alonso. Uh, some slight contact there. I didn't see if there was any damage, but both Sauber's in the top 10 as it stands right now. Burnout F1 going to try and go around the outside of Andre BCF 1997 into turn number five now with the inside line for turn number six. And it looks like he is just about going to get him. Uh, switching back now onto the uh, onboard with the intermediate driver of Wycombs. Now coming under attack from the full wet guys. So yeah, a as mentioned, Ali, I don't know if those inters were the right choice. Yeah, he is definitely on the wrong tyres at the moment. Limitless has dived down the inside of the Flying Fin. He's managed to make it stick. The Flying Fin is going to have a cutback, though. And he's going to try and go around the outside of the Haas driver. It looks like he's just about managed to make it stick. But Limitless holds the inside for the next corner and gets up into P3 as Jason is going side by side with Wycombs, who is really, really struggling on the intermediates at this stage. Quite a messy start in the midfield and towards the back, but the front runners pretty much all managed to keep it clean. So we are set up for a very good race from this point. It's now we're on board with Cupid. He's still managing to keep in touch with Martin, which is pretty crucial. And he's also managing to break away from the guys behind. Yep, and that is going to be crucial, especially right now, because no DRS is activated. I mean, it's only... Uh, ooh, and that was a Toro Rosso, I believe, off. I don't know who that was. Uh, that was Leobot. Leobot into the barrier, coming out of the penultimate corner uh, on the on the back straight, on the on the way down to the final corner. That was an interesting one. Say, are you coming under attack from Mike Marshmallow in behind? So, say, are you actually losing a position at the start of this race now down into seventh position? Jason 97F1 going to make a move on Franglish in the McLaren. Uh, Franglish, another one of those drivers on the intermediates, really just doesn't seem that he can keep up with those full wet drivers. But uh, potentially with those intermediates, if the rain does start to slow down enough, then those intermediates could come back towards those guys uh, and they could be faster later on in the race. And here's a pretty significant gap right now between Reversal and Alonzo up ahead. Uh, as I mentioned, no DRS just yet because, of course, uh, it's only lap two, but I don't think we're going to be seeing the DRS anytime soon because of these weather conditions. Uh, and Giovinazzi going very deep on Wycombs there. Wycombs is going to come back at him. He's going to try and go around the outside of turn five. Difficult to do, but if you could do it, you can get the inside line for this corner here. Turn six, Lucky Dog 2000 now, who we saw pretty quick in the wet in Singapore. He was doing pretty well, if, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, Going to try and move it up the inside on Franglish. Uh, again, on those intermediate. 
Idiots through 7 and 8, and it looks like he is still alongside him. He's going to go side by side into the hairpin at turn number 9. He's going to try and go around the outside. I imagine that should be fairly easy, especially with this decreasing radius corner here, uh, heading into turn 10 and then turn 11. Uh, back on board with Sayaru, uh, he really needs to be making some moves here. He's got AOR Reversal up ahead. Uh, and then a pretty decent sized gap ahead of reversal to STSF1 Alonzo. So uh, Sayaru is going to need to clear reversal as quickly as he can and get up into the front because, again, Sayaru is number two in the championship here. Uh, we need him to score well if we want this championship go to go down to the final race. Yeah, he really needs to go to points on the fly fit, but that's not going to help him. He's gotten way, way too deep into the final corner, almost smashing into the back of reversal, and that is not going to help his championship hopes one bit as Tierra Martin is streaking away at the front. You can see his fuel is not looking particularly great at this stage, but Ciario is now battling with his teammate all the way down in P8, which is not what he, would he, what he would have wanted to see at this stage. Both Salvas are still ahead of him, even reversal with that front wing damage, but Ciario is still on the inside of his teammate. His teammate not being particularly helpful here. He's still battling away with the championship contender, and now he's, Ciario has finally managed to get the move done, and Falcon is also around the outside of burnout, so that hasn't really helped either Renault and was slightly pointless but now we have a replay of the start yeah actually uh and we saw lag from martin i think it was at the start but now uh, from flying finn's point of view it looked like lag from cupid in fact but uh as you mentioned earlier ali these guys uh really making it through at the front with no huge issues here's what happened between hamilton and jason 97 f1 so uh hamilton up ahead in the mclaren or in the mercedes makes contact with i think that was a force india uh that puts him sideways makes contact with the red bull up ahead as well uh, so, yeah, a little bit messy in the back there. No DNFs. Everybody still, uh, everybody drove away from that with all four wheels, so that's good. But uh, here's RS Falcon uh, later that same lap on the opening lap, going up the inside on Andre BCF 1997 through turn 7 and 8 and uh, grabbing that P10. Uh, here's on board with Ycoms later in the lap as he uh, is watching Andre BCF 1991 or 1997 and AOR Raikkonen go side by side. Oh, and a bit of contact there. From Lucky Dog 2000 now on Ycoms, I don't really know what the Force India driver could have done differently there to try and avoid that contact. So I think he was just an unwilling victim in all of that. But uh, on board now with HDR Cupid as we start lap number four now, defending from the Haas driver of TRL Limitless, who has been struggling in the recent races, but uh, he is pressuring for second position now. And that is playing into the hands of TRL Martin here, Ali. He is just really starting to pull away now. Yeah, the more the guys behind battle, the more Tierra Martin is going to run away at the front. It's been a while since we've seen Martin and Limitless 1-2 since Season 10. It's good to see them back right at the front again. But now on board with Burnout, right on the back of Andre. And it looks like he's going to be looking up the inside into Turn 4. Andre is very late on the brakes. And Raikkonen is just sat behind them, waiting to for an opportunity to pounce and try and get past both of them maybe. Again, another driver is very low on fuel and Andre is ridiculously low on fuel. Four laps down, that is a lot of fuel saving he's got to do. And this is towards the back end of the point. So this is still for a points paying position, but now back on board with the flying fin. He will not be very happy about that dive limit. It's pulled off as he's gone very deep into the heaven, right on the back of HCR Cupid. And it looks like these guys are going to continue to battle for a while. So Martin could be in for a good race here as Raikkonen is down the inside of the Renault. Slight contact, the Renault's hand goes up in frustration there as Raikkonen has managed to get around the outside. And Jason, the other Ferrari, is going to follow him around the outside as well. Bernard is going to have the inside line, but now the Flying Finn is all over the back of TRL Limitless into this very, very tricky right-hand corner. It's off camber. There's a little bit of contact between the two of them, but Limitless manages to maintain the position. And the Flying Finn is taking plenty of risks here, which is probably not what you would expect from a guy who has such a big lead in the championship. Yeah, I guess, I mean, he can be a little bit riskier as he thinks about going up the inside of Limitless, but then uh, thinks better of it and decides to let JD go through, hold on to that position. He might be looking to slipstream him on this very long run down towards the first corner. But yeah, the Flying Finn definitely seeming like he is uh, pushing very hard, wants to get up to the top. Uh, and I mean, he's got the points gap. Even if he DNFs and Zayaru wins the race, he's still going to have a 53-point lead. So uh, back on board with the intermediates driver of Wycoms, who is uh, struggling through the final corner. Burnout F1 now trying to get that position back on both Ferraris at the same time. Shoots up the inside and ends up getting neither one of them. So Raikkonen 
will continue on in 11th position with his teammate Jason 97F1 just behind him in the other Ferrari. Those guys, though, now starting to lose touch. Looking at the minimap, you can see he's starting to lose touch with the top 10. Uh, so the, the battling that these guys have going on is unfortunately just causing them to lose touch with those points paying positions up ahead. Uh, but Burnout F1 really doesn't care about that. He really just wants to get back in front of those two Ferraris. So that battle will continue to rage on. RS Falcon in the McLaren and uh, trailing behind CRU here pretty uh, by a fairly large amount. But uh, he can pick up the slipstream here on this back straight on the run down towards the turn nine hairpin and back on board with the Ferraris now. And it seems like some oversteer and some understeer going on for the Ferrari guys. And into the turn nine hairpin we go. Oh, and that's very, very deep for AOR Raiken. And that's going to put Jason alongside him on his left hand side as they climb up the hill. He's going to have to go around the outside now for turn 11 which might actually be the better position. Oh, there's light contact between the front right of Jason 97F1 and the side pod of his teammate, but they're still going to be side by side into turn number 12 here. But it looks like Raikkonen able to carry a little bit more speed through there. And ATR Cupid now coming to the end of lap number five. And again, that gap up ahead really starting to seem larger. And it does seem that the rain has stopped falling, at least from this point of view. Yeah, it, it does seem pretty damp still from the point of view of Tayaru here, but he's going to come into the pits for a set of, I assume, intermediates, unless these full wet tires are already destroyed after just five laps of racing. Oh, and that's a... Whoa! Something strange going on with Tayaru there. I'm not sure what happened, but I think he picked up a penalty there. That looked like a very bizarre incident as Bernard's rammed into the back of Raikkonen and coming into the pit. And oh, that's another Renault having issues coming into the pit lane. He's also been passed by Sierra Hamilton as well. But a number of drivers being offered strategy changes by their engineers on that lap. And this is where Wycombe's strategy will come into its own. He started on the intermediate tyres and look how much he's gained. He's only on five lap older tyres and he's come up just behind Cupid who was running around in P2. So... Despite all those incidents Wycombe's got involved in, he has pulled a worldly strategy here and he is all over the back of the net leaders pretty much. So I don't think Martin is too far up the road or he won't be when he comes out of the pit. So Wycombe's has really worked a good strategy here as Limitless and uh, the Flying Fin are still out on full wet tyres. So possibly an undercut from Cupid as the Flying Fin is looking around the outside of the hairpin but decides pretty sensibly to back out of it they know or they surely they must know that if they battle they are just going to lose time for the guys who you would assume are on the right tires at this stage it certainly seems like they are as we're on board with hr q but he seems to be oh we say that and then the back end just stepping out a little bit on the red bull there oh and falcon now making contact with six skills in the manner up ahead under braking for the turn seven uh turn seven turn eight double left hander there uh and he's gonna put the pressure on into the hairpin now and can you get the move done it looks like he can Six skills still out there on those full wet tires. Same as Limitless, same as the Flying Fin, same as TRL Martin as well, who is still up ahead. And we can see on the minimap, he has uh, dived into the pits. Let's see if the Flying Fin with the inside line is also going to dive into the pits. Yes, he is. And it looks like Limitless is going to follow him in behind in that Haas as well and come into the pits. And I am getting confirmation that it was indeed a screen freeze for Sayaru that caused that issue. So a very undeserved penalty there, but really nothing to be done about it as far as I know. And there goes the Mercedes of TRL Martin out of the pit box with that fresh set of intermediate tires. The Flying Fin not going to get held up. A sub two second pit stop for the Williams team there is going to give him the best possible chance as uh, the guys are looking to undercut him from behind. So here comes TRL Martin out of the pits there. Who is that on the left hand side? It's Franklish on those intermediate tires. So Franklish, one of those drivers that started on the inters has now taken the lead of this race. He is on slightly older intermediates. Um, so he does have to worry certainly about the very fast Mercedes driver that's now sat directly behind him but you have to say uh, I, I can't remember the last time one of the McLaren boys have been leading a race so uh, very good news for Franklish there let's see what's gonna go what's gonna happen with say are you here is he gonna come out alongside Hamilton no he's gonna come out ahead of Hamilton uh, Bernard F1 is also going to come out ahead of Mauricio Alonso he's gonna go very deep but it looks like he's just about going to hold them off. But yeah, we've got <laughs> the McLarens are first and seventh right now. That's pretty good, Ali. Yeah, very impressive from Franklish. Again, working the same strategy that Wycombs did. Starting on the intermediates has really worked out. It was obviously a gamble worth taking for those guys. But Franklish, he has some fairly significant front wing damage. He's now going to get passed by uh, Mike Marshmallow, that is, on the inside. And with that front wing damage, there's not really a huge amount he can do with that. With that. He has fragments of front wing damage falcon is what i meant but why comes rolling around in p4 he is slightly losing touch with cupid in p3 so 
Obviously, his older tyres are going to slightly hinder him at this stage, but this is obviously much higher up than he would have been if he'd started on the full wet. So it was definitely a strategy gamble worth taking, and Franglish is still in front of TRL Martin. This is definitely playing into the hands of the guys behind because Martin is just being held up by this McLaren in front of him on much older tyres. So seven laps is definitely going to make a difference to the tyre, whereas Martin's trying to go around the outside at the final corner. It's a risky move. He's going to go for a huge cutback line, and surely this is going to be a fairly simple pass. Now down the straight, he hasn't had the greatest of exits though so Franklish is defending the inside he is defending full position here as Franklish has the fastest lap of the race although that is instantly beaten by Cupid Martin pulling to the outside for turn one very late on the brakes and it doesn't look like there's going to be a huge amount Franklish can do about that he's still on the inside though but Martin surely with the inside for turn two is going to be able to get that move done so he has lost a lot of time and you can see in the rear view mirror that um, Cupid is definitely closing up on the back of these two yeah, on the minimap, you can really see it starting to close up. But, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, Franklish will actually continue putting on the pressure on TRL Martin because we would like to see more battling for the lead of this race. Uh, and here is the replay of what happened with Sayario. Again, right, just, I mean, that is right when you were, when you would start breaking for the pit line. And unfortunately, that's exactly when his game decided to have that freeze. And again, really just nothing to be done about that. The Ferrari rivalry on lap number five as Jason97 moving up the inside and deciding to go into the pit lane. The Ferraris are side by side into the pit lane, which means someone is gonna get held up and it looks like it's gonna be Raikkonen, but no, can, oh, can Jason get on the brakes? Yes, he can, just about slows it down. Coming into the pits, a very exciting pit entrance for both the Ferrari guys. I'm not sure why both of them are coming into the pits at the same time. That's definitely not the best strategy. Uh, here's HDR Cupid now on lap number nine, making the move on Franglish. Again, Franglish on slightly older rubber compared to the other guys who started on the full wets and then moved over to the intermediate tires. And again, in the low speed zones, the uh, tire wear difference between these guys really showing as uh, Cupid really just able to get on that throttle a lot better than the McLaren driver. Here's Falcon now coming under attack from the Sauber. He's in a Sauber sandwich right now as a reversal moves up the inside of turn number one and a very easy move for AOR reversal. No problems for him there. Uh, Flying Finn now in ninth position has come up behind Ycoms, which we knew that was gonna happen eventually. Uh, and wow, a diving move at the inside of turn 14, the penultimate corner. Not something you see very often, but Ycoms with a much better exit out of the corner is gonna defend and hold on to the position for the meantime, but the Flying Finn with a much, much greater top speed, that slipstream, and a bit later on the brakes into the final corner is gonna grab that P4 position off of Ycom. So Ycom's down into fifth position, but it does look like Franglish up ahead is in the pits. Yes, Franglish into the pits now. Uh, I assume he's gonna be fitting another set of the intermediates, but let's see if Ycom's can do anything against the Flying Finn. He's gonna have to go around the outside of turn one or try a cutback here at the exit of turn one. No, doesn't. it just doesn't seem like he has the tire life alley. Well, it would probably be sensible for Wycombs just to let the Flying Finn go. There's really no point battling him when he has, well, pretty much seven lap fresher tyres. It's probably better just to stick in the slipstream as much as possible and try and lose as little time as possible battling. So Wycombs has probably got to try and save these tyres until the track dries up, or at least I think that would probably be the aim because the guys who have much fresher tyres will probably be able to go until the track dries up if that makes any sense so yeah Wycombs has really got to try and save these tires as much as possible as we're now back towards the back end of the points with on board with Andre right on the back of Falcon who's losing it through a very high speed corner that's not exactly where you want to be losing the car his front wing damage must surely be hurting him quite a lot at this stage he's running slightly wide as well so Andre surely has got to be right on the back of Falcon that's very very close there almost steaming into the back of the McLaren still in lean mix he still has a lot of fuel to save but possibly Pulling to the inside for the hairpin is not a dive actually, but it doesn't need to as Vulcan has locked up, gone very, very deep, and the Torosso is able to breeze past. But look at that exit from Falcon. That is a stunning exit, and he's managed to just about maintain the position there. So Falcon is fighting on despite this fairly significant front wing damage. Yeah, fantastic defending from Falcon there. Now we've got another uh, inter-team battle. We've got the two Saubers, Mike Marshmallow, being caught by his teammate AOR Reversal at the end of lap number 10 as they come out of the penultimate corner. Reversal using that slipstream on the rundown towards the final corner, but I imagine he's going to stay behind into this final corner. No dive bombs for him there. Andre now in the Toro Rosso going to try and make the move on Falcon, and he's got the inside line for the final corner, and it looks like it's going to be a fairly straightforward overtake for him, and I think that's Raikkonen in the background as well that's going to try and follow 
him through. He keeps changing the ch camera so quickly. No, it is Jason. My mistake, Jason 97 F1 that's gonna try and follow him through. And in fact, he's gonna try and get two overtakes at the same time. He's gonna go up the inside of the Toro Rosso and up the outside of the McLaren, but actually uh, uh, not able to get either of those moves done. He's now got the inside line for turn number two on the McLaren. Can he get the move on Falcon? No, he can't. And Falcon looks like he gets the better exit out of turn two. That's gonna allow him to hold on to that position. And in fact, he's gotten such a good exit that he's now using the slipstream on the Toro Rosso of Andre BCF. He's gonna go up the inside of turn number four. Can he get it all slowed down without any sort of contact? Yes, he can. Fantastic side-by-side -side racing from both of the McLaren drivers so far today as uh, he was not able to get the position and is a little bit off the apex there. There we go, move it back over then. A little too much over the apex. Oh, and that is a corner cut warning, his third one, and that is gonna give him a three second time penalty, uh, which is very unfortunate for RS Falcon. But of course we don't know how many other drivers might be struggling with three second time penalties or even more than that, as we are rapidly approaching the halfway point of this race. And uh, as we know, Ali, the 50% uh, forecast for rain should mean that this should start letting up in the next handful of laps or so. Yeah, we will probably be seeing drives fairly shortly, but something else to point out is Tyrrell Limitless is all the way down in P11. Something must have happened at some point because he was battling the Flying Fin for what was P3, I believe. So something fairly drastic has happened for him to be all the way down in P11. But Jason looking up the inside of Falcon into the penultimate corner. Can he do what the Flying Fin couldn't? He's gone very, very wide on the exit. Falcon will have the cutback. We've already seen some fairly impressive defensive driving from the McLaren. And now he's going to try and get the Ferrari back into the final corner. Jason defending the inside. Falcon having to look to the outside but not having a lot of straight line speed. But that's a very, very late move on the brakes. Is he going to try and get a cutback and make a move? into turn one he's got a fairly good exit but limitless is now trying to get involved as well falcon putting it up into rich mix in the slipstream of the ferrari pulling to the inside he's almost being schumacher into the wall there but looking to the inside for turn one and Ooh. he's very late on the brakes he's locked up both front tires as well he's gone almost straight on just about managing to avoid the gravel and he's lost a position to limitless as well he's now going side by side with jason around the outside at turn two and it's a very impressive move from the Haas driver to go around the outside at turn two and he's now up into p9 but surely that must be fairly disappointing after battling for a podium position earlier on as now we have a replay of why comes on stf uh, sts f1 alonso why comes with those much older tires is just going to be falling down the field at this stage yep yeah i think you are right about that and uh here's the replay of the saubers reversal uh picking up the slipstream on mike marshmallow look it doesn't look like mike is uh defending too hard there we can't obviously can't see his fuel mix there but it wouldn't surprise me to find out that he was in lean there this is where rs falcon went very deep it almost seemed intentionally as if he went very deep there because he did get a fantastic exit out of that final corner now he didn't have the benefit of the slipstream that was all limitless that was getting the slipstream from those two guys up ahead uh and he just squeezes up in the middle no I'm sorry, that was actually uh, Jason, 97F1, that was moving up the inside there. Uh, and uh, yeah, three wide for a moment there into the corner. And uh, Falcon hanging it around the outside at turn two. Again, fantastic defensive racing we're seeing from these guys. After uh, a few awkward moments in the, in the opening laps when everybody was real close, uh, we've been seeing some fantastic, some very respectful side-by-side -side racing. Uh, Ewar Raikkonen does seem to be a man on a charge. He's carrying so much more speed through these high-speed corners than RS Falcon is. Uh, so I think he's going to be closing up as we are now. Oh, Falcon off the circuit. Very far off the circuit is just going to allow that Ferrari to go right on through. And his teammate up ahead, Franglish, in 11th position. So now both McLarens outside of the top 10. Safe to assume that both of them ended up coming into pit for another set of intermediates, if I'm not mistaken. But on board with Wycoms, again, still out there on that first set of intermediate tires. Yeah, and there is the tire life. That front left at 71%. Uh, Jason, 97F1, up the inside of the penultimate corner on Andre BCF, 1997. Uh, but now Andre will get the slipstream, not just down this straight, but down the start-finish straight as well. Let's see if he's going to make the move into the final corner or hold off and try and get it done into turn one. Uh, he's going to go around the outside and take the late apex, and it looks like he's going to try and do the business into turn one. Limitless up ahead, meanwhile, uh, pulling ahead after he's gotten by. He's now up into P8, so uh, ever since we spoke of Limitless being further down than we expected, he is, he is starting to claw back through. Uh, and Jason 97F1 again defending the inside line from Andre uh, into turn number one and he's going to give him the room through turn number two as well but again uh, just going to get him at the exit of the corner but it's not over yet of course that Toro Rosso is going to pick up another big toe here on the run down towards turn number four could be another threat 
could go side by side. Aris Falcon, as I mentioned, in 13th position. Sayariu is the car behind, and that is very unfortunate uh, because, again, Sayariu is second in the championship, the only man that can really put any sort of pressure on the flying fin at this stage, and he is outside of the points. And uh, I have to say, Ali, the rain is practically negligible. I mean, there, there's, you know, it's spitting now and then, but uh, maybe a handful more laps, and I think we might be on, uh, on slicks. Yeah, a lot of drivers selecting the dry tyres as their next tyre for the next pit stop. And obviously, the quicker the track dries up, the better it plays into the hands of Wycombs. And if he manages to take that set of tyres that long, it will be very, very impressive. But the gap between Cupid and Martin is fairly sizable as Cupid has changed his camera view, which is slightly odd but he has said to his engineer that he is going to box this lap he's going for a set of hard tires which you would assume would take him fairly comfortably to the end of the race but martin has stayed out so this is a big gamble from cupid in p2 the flying fin stays out as well so this is what you would assume would be the crossover point so it is going to be interesting to see whether Cupid can actually gain on the gut on Martin in front. And Wycombs has managed to take those intermediate ties to the dry period. And he's going to go for another lap. That is a ridiculous number of laps on that set of intermediates. That is a huge amount of tyre wear as well as Ciari all the way down in P13. Yet again, we're having to see another recovery drive from the Renault man. And again, it's not really in his control as he's coming into the pits for a set of hard tyres with a very, very last minute strategy choice. But he's got a lot of work to do to get himself back in the points today. At least no screen freeze this time as he came into the pits. Oh, why comes with some oversteer through turn three? I mean, that's barely a turn at all. Uh, especially for a modern F1 car, so uh, a bit surprising to see some oversteer through that corner, but uh, Sayaryu is going to come out on a set of the hard compound tires. It does seem that everybody that came in at the end of lap 15 is going for the hards, except for Raikkonen up ahead, actually, and uh, DRS has been enabled, so whoa, okay, that was that was a scary one, Sayaryu, uh, but uh, yeah, DRS is enabled, so clearly we are at the crossover point. As uh, DRS has enabled, that means it is dry enough. There is certainly a drying line Line, although the drivers are going to have to be very, very careful that they don't go off that dry line because, of course, it's still going to be a little bit damp off of the racing line. So Cupid is doing pretty well. Just a touch of oversteer at the exit of that turn nine hairpin, but Cupid able to keep everything under control. Here is your race leader, TRL Martin, now heading into the final corner. Is he going to come into the pits at the end of lap 16? He sure is. He carries lots of speed through that final corner. I love the final corner here because uh, you take it differently depending on whether or not you're pitting. And the Mercedes driver finding oh, on the limit there for him. And Wycom's 83% on the front left the time to pit is last lap, but uh, he's going to have to settle for this lap and come into the pits for what uh, could potentially be a set of the mediums. We saw Raikkonen was on a set of the mediums, and anybody that's able to do 16 laps on a set of intermediates, Alley, I would assume is going to be able to do 12 laps on mediums. Yeah, that's very impressive from Wycombs, but you can see Cupid going purple. He's purple in the middle sector as well. And uh, Where is he going to come out in relation to Martin? That gap is definitely smaller, so Cupid has definitely chosen the right lap to pit on he has gained a little bit on Martin and I think that is probably within DRS so the perfect time to pit from Cupid and they have a huge gap to the flying fin in third that is a fairly sizable advantage that the two leaders have with the two Williams running around in third and fourth and Wycombs is going to come out in P7 just marginally ahead of TRL Limitless but he's gone wide at turn one Limitless is he going to look around the outside at turn two again no he's not he's going to have to settle behind the Force India but again that's very impressive from Wycombs to get up to where he is considering how far down the field he was on lap one as Martin cuts the corner a little bit no warning for that though and he still has his lead just about that is a very sketchy moment and Cupid manages to take the lead of the race. So that mistake could prove very costly for Martin. As now we have Wycombs and Limitless getting very, very close in the middle sector. But we are set up for a titanic battle for the lead now. Yeah, it seems Wycombs possibly struggling with the amount of grip that he's getting through these corners. I think he's got he's gotten so used to driving around on 70% worn intermediate tires that he's forgotten where the real braking zones are. Uh, he's gone a bit deep into that turn 9 hairpin. Limitless is going to come back at him, but no, he's not going to be able to be side by side as they climb up the hill through 10 and into 11 now. Oh, onto the curbing a little bit. That's going to leave a gap at the inside of the corner, but no, Limitless hangs back. He is all over the back of him, though, all over the gearbox of that Force India, and the clouds are definitely starting to part. I am seeing blue in the sky so i think we're gonna have a clear dry track for the rest of this race rs falcon now one of those drivers that has opted for the medium compound tires he's got say are you up ahead and say are you 
currently on the attack on AOR Raikkonen and, and outside of the points as it stands right now. So uh, not over just yet, though. He still has 11 laps to try and make up as many positions as he possibly can. Uh, but it would be uh, something truly special for him to get up ahead of the Flying Fin where he needs to be. Oh, and that contact with AOR Raikkonen into the final corner is going to break off a piece of his front wing. And that is definitely going to hurt him as Limitless, given the squeeze to Wycombs through turn number one, giving him exactly as much room as he can and, that, and not an inch more. And Limitless moves up into seventh position. Wycombs, though, with the slipstream, is going to come right back at him. And Limitless doesn't bother to defend the inside line. Heading into turn number four, he's going to try and go around the outside, which would give him the inside line for turn number five. But actually, he carries so much more speed through there than Wycombs that he just moves up ahead. And now Wycombs going to have to deal with that dirty air. Oh, up ahead from the Haas. You can see him lifting through turn number six as he is struggling with that dirty air from the car ahead. Again, into seven and eight. You can see him missing the apex through both of those corners, taking a slightly different line from the car ahead and just trying to stay behind for as, as long as he can because again DRS has been activated and we're going to see just how much that can help TRL Martin as he flicks that wing open and Cupid is going to defend the inside line no he's drifting over to the right hand side Martin thinking about having a dive bomb thinks better of it decides to stay behind Cupid for right now takes a very late apex through that final corner sets up the slipstream opens up that DRS gets to the left-hand side. I wasn't sure which side he was going to go to. He's going to have to go around the outside, but no, with the benefit of that DRS, it's a nice straightforward maneuver for the Mercedes driver. Oh, I say that, but Cupid's going to come back under the braking zone. Very late braking for Cupid. Just about keeping it under control around the outside of turn number two. Still side-by-side -side with TRL Martin coming out of turn two into turn number three. Now still side-by-side -side on the rundown towards turn number four. Now it does see that Martin might be pulling ahead a little bit, but Cupid later on the brakes and with the inside line as well still side by side for the Red Bull and the Mercedes but no Cupid has to concede TRL Martin retakes the lead of this race Wycombs now defending yet again from TRL Limitless not able to make grounds on Mike Marshmallow up ahead in the Sauber and here comes Limitless now on the right hand side of Wycombs the Force India driver is going to have to go around the outside of turn four here looks like he's on the brakes pretty late and that'll give him the inside line for turn five. Surely, surely they won't be side by side through turn five. No, they are not. And man, now that it's dried up, we've got some incredible racing going on here, Ali. Yeah, the, for the lead especially, it is the Season 10 champion versus the Season 11 champion. So much respect between the two of them. And we are now getting an incredible battle. As we have Raiken on the mediums down in P11. He is surely going to be looking to try and pick up some points. He's run very, very wide. And on the mini map, you can see the gap to the points is fairly sizable. He is on a softer compound of tyre than Andre in front of him. So potentially looking to get into the points. We've seen him have some very, have some very feisty battles with his teammate during the race. So he's definitely going to be looking for some points. But he's also got Siari behind him who is going to be on an absolute charge at this point. He is definitely needs some points he's currently not going to be scoring anything today which would be an absolute disaster for his championship so he really really needs to start climbing the field and there's a huge gap to the point so it's not going to be that easy for the Renault driver to actually get anywhere near the points in this race but RS Falcon has been up and down and everywhere in this race is right on the back of these two as well so it is going to be a bit of a scrap for P11 not that it means a huge amount at this stage but this could potentially turn into a battle for the points as Ciari is down the inside of Raikkonen and Raikkonen on the mediums is able to hang around the outside just about this contact between the two of them and Ciari with the DRS is surely going to be able to pull away from the Ferrari on this straight he's being very very aggressive and he's just about managed to get that done he's weaving all over the track trying to defend as well as he can it's a huge dive from Raikkonen into turn one there's big locker big contact as well Ciari is going to have the inside for turn two the Raikkonen is still on the outside just about managing to hang it around the outside but Ciari just about gets the move done and now he's going to set up by chasing down Andre is Raikkonen and is on the grass and almost in the wall how has he saved that that has got to be up there for save of the season from Raikkonen and that is very impressive car control to keep that one out the wall and his race is still just about keeping going but Martin racing with Cupid for the lead here Cupid down the inside he's, he's well known for breaking very late in late breaking maneuvers and that is another one there he's dived down the inside not the most sensible place but he's got DRS though so Martin is going to have to make a move with the power of Slipstream alone he's running in lean mix trying to go around the outside at the final corner he's so late on the brakes there trying to go around the outside of the Red Bull he's going to have a much better exit is he's not even going to have DRS Cupid is going to have DRS and surely that is going to be enough to keep him ahead but this is an incredible battle for the lead and this is just going to be playing into the hands of the Flying Finn who I think is not too far behind in P3 
Yep, uh, looking at the minimap, yeah, they're just coming out of turn one, and he's headed into turn one. Oh, and more contact between Raikkonen and Sayario Falcon is involved as well. We've got a Ferrari in the wall. We've got a McLaren into the barrier as well. Sayario is going to continue on. I'm not sure what kind of damage he has, but that is very destructive, uh, very disappointing uh, actions. And uh, Falcon is going to be feeling that one for sure, as is Raikkonen. Uh, here's a replay of lap 20, where Sayaryu decided to stay to the right-hand side. I, I believe that was Sayaryu's right. Uh, I, I don't think Raikkonen was entitled to that inside line, so that initial uh, kind of whoops-a-daisy earlier on lap 20, I'm, I'm going to give that one to Raikkonen here, but let's have a look on board with RS Falcon. Oh, that's a very late move for AOR Raikkonen, and I mean, the space was there. He just gets put into a spin. I don't think anybody's to blame for that one. I think there was just a little bit of contact between Sayaryu and Raikkonen. That put Raikkonen into a spin. That put the McLaren into the Ferrari, and that allowed Sayaryu to take off into the distance, and now he can focus on the car up ahead. Here's a replay of lap number 22. Jason and Andre continuing this battle, still going on for P9. Uh, Jason 97F1 going around the outside of the Toro Rosso at turn number two. Uh, lap 21 Oh, and there's a three-second time penalty for Franklish. Oh, and then he gets possibly distracted and sent into the barrier. And that is, that's his entire front wing gone. So he is most certainly going to have to come into the pits for that one. So that is pretty much any chance of him picking up points gone. Um, on board with Tyrell Martin, that was uh, looking very framey for a second there as we were heading into the final corner. As we finish lap number 22, just six laps remaining in this race. And with that DRS, he is going to move to the inside line for turn number one, side by side with the Red Bull. And uh, ATR Cupid, no surprise, late onto the brakes, is going to try and go around the outside of turn one. But no, nothing doing there. Going to have to stay behind for turn number two as well. Possibly could pick up a slipstream here and challenge into turn number four. Let's see. Or I'm going to keep my eye on that rear view mirror. In fact, uh, Martin's going to look backwards for us. There's the Red Bull on the right-hand side. He is going to move up alongside him. Martin's going to have to give him the room. He does give him the room. Very respectful ra racing from both of these guys. But Martin now with the inside line for turn number five should be able to hold on to that position. Uh, Jason 97F1 again going side-by-side -side with Andre BCF 1997. Uh, these guys still going side-by-side -side through turn number two out of the corner. It looks like the t advantage Toro Rosso. But then, of course, with the slipstream, the Ferrari could get him back into turn four here. Looks like he's got the straight line speed. Using a bit of rich mix there. In fact, the Ferrari driver, uh, Jason 97F1, with a little bit extra fuel, which is uh, strange. A lot of the drivers opting to run low on fuel since uh, lean mixture is very common for wet races. So we've seen a number of drivers going a very lean sort of race strategy when it comes to fuel. Uh, Wycombs, though, up in seventh position and not too far behind Mark, Ma Mike Marshmallow. It seems about the same sort of distance as I remember the last time we checked in on Wycombs. Yeah, just under two seconds and just uh, under three seconds to Limitless behind in eighth position. So uh, Wycombs race has certainly turned around since those opening laps on the intermediates in those full wet conditions after what was a very difficult start. But here we go. Uh, go ahead and talk us through this battle here, Ali. Yeah, it is keep it all over the back of T.R. Martin pulling out of the slips right at the last minute trying to go around the outside of turn one he's very late on the brakes switching to some beautiful broadcast cameras he's going to have the inside for turn two martin on the outside cupid managing to maintain the position and he is up into the lead of the race and we saw last time we were on board with these guys the flying fin is closing up behind them and now martin in the slips you're moving to the outside for turn four he's going to have to be very late on the brakes so you can see the flying fin in the back of the shot but martin around the outside at turn four he's been given the space by cupid and surely they can't go side by side through the middle sector they're going to try that's very, very close between the two of them. And what a move from Cupid around the outside. And Martin almost into the back of him. High and mouth stuff for both of them. What a race. What a battle between the two of these guys. And it could become a three-way fight coming into the final few laps of the race. Martin has got a bit of fuel saving to do. But this is going to be an incredible battle in the final few laps here. Yeah, less than five laps remaining in this race. Aris Falcon is going to grab a free position off of Burnout F1. Not really sure what happened there. Eowar Raikkonen is going to benefit from that as well and try and put some uh, pressure on the McLaren driver as well. 70% on the rear left. That is very surprising. Uh, I always thought this was kind of a front-limited circuit, not a rear-limited circuit, but it does seem Eowar Raikkonen 
struggling with those rear tires. Lots of tire wear. Here we go. TRL Martin versus HGR Cupid. Round number 73 of this race. End of lap number 24. Cupid defends the inside line heading into the final corner. Martin's going to try and go around the outside. No, he's not. He's going to try a cutback. Very late apex, but Cupid just parks it right at the exit of the corner, and Martin just cannot get on the throttle. Uh, he's in the slipstream now, getting the DRS as well. He'll get the inside line for turn number two. Really not much Cupid could do about that one, and he is going to give him a bit of a squeeze, then move back over to the left-hand side of the circuit to take the racing line through turn number one. It's going to move him very, very close, tucked right underneath the gearbox of that Mercedes up ahead, but it does seem Martin a little bit quicker through turn two is going to pull out a bit of a gap, and I think that's going to make him nice and safe as they come into turn number four. I don't think he's going to have to worry about Cupid for for once, for, for finally. Uh, and, uh, oh, uh, there might be something going on with Cupid's fuel as well. Oh, yeah, Cupid is very low on fuel, and there is not much left in this race. Less than four laps remaining now as Jason 97F1 and Andre BCF 1997 uh, continuing that battle. Andre now taking that P9 position. Jason now down to P10. Sayaru uh, up into P11, but I'm not sure how much further behind that battle he is. AOR Reversal having a quiet race in fifth position. We've seen him a couple of times, mainly battling with Mike Marshmallow, and he's gotten it all wrong, and he's into the barrier. He's lost his entire front wing. That's definitely going to lose him at least one, uh, two positions, possibly even more than that, almost certainly more than that, because he is definitely going to have to pit for a brand new front wing. He's got to do half a lap now without the benefit of a front wing on an F1 car, which is very, very difficult, as you can imagine. We've got a Ferrari into the pits for what looked like a set of soft compound tires. Uh, Cupid now coming under or going on the attack once again on TRL Martin is going to take the lead of this race heading into the final corner. He goes a bit deep, but nothing too major there and uh, is going to get the ben benefit of the DRS once again. But TRL Martin using that rich mix, he's got, uh, well, no, he has zero spare fuel. Uh, but he, that's better than HCR Cupid is doing anyway, so he's got more fuel than Cupid does, certainly. Uh, but Cupid able, able to hold on to that uh, lead position as they head into turn number one to start lap number 26 now. Um, and again, uh, the Flying Finn really not far behind. Uh, I don't know about you, Ali, but he seems closer to me. Yeah, he's definitely closing up. And by... By the end of this race, it could be a three-way battle for the lead of the race, but Cupid has a huge amount of fuel to save. He's almost a lap down on fuel, and there's very few laps remaining, so it's going to be very difficult for him to save that much before the end of the race. But now on board with Jason, looking down the inside of Andre. This is for P8 now, due to reversals. Heartbreaking incident. They're both closing up onto the back of Tierra Limitless, so this is going to become a three-way battle for P7. Limitless seems to have lost any kind of pace, but now back on board with the battle for the lead. Martin pulling to the outside for the hairpin. Cupid, Cupid defending the inside inside once again and he's managed to make the move stick it's much more sensible for martin to just wait for the drs zone possibly to wait for turn one rather than the final corner because obviously if you overtake into turn one then well if you overtake into the final corner then the other car gets the benefit of the slipstream into turn one but now on board with lucky dog is coming under pressure from aor raikkonen who had to pit due to his extreme tire wear he had which is slightly surprising but down in p17 that is not going to mean a huge amount in the championship but martin all over the back of cupid again he's going to pretty much lift off into the final corner wait for turn one it's a very sensible thing to do martin using all his experience at this stage of the race and beginning the penultimate lap of the race the flying fin is now well and truly in this battle martin all over the back of hcr cupid pulling to the outside for turn one looking to try and go around the outside cupid's late on the brakes as always not leaving the mercedes driver a lot of space and look how close the williams is to the back of this is absolutely incredible for the lead of the race but cupid is still just about managing to hang on and this is going to be a fairly insane final two laps of the race but Cupid's fuel is still minus and he is still running in rich mix which is complete madness but this is going to be extremely difficult for the Red Bull driver to hold on to this lead whilst also trying to maintain his fuel this is going to be a very very hard balance to get right yeah, if Cupid can do it, though, uh, massive respect to him as Ycom's still holding on to that sixth place position ahead of TRL Limitless and closing in on Mike Marshmallow, it seems. 1.1 seconds is the gap to the Sauber driver up ahead. Uh, meanwhile, again, AOR Raikkonen on those fresh soft compound tires trying to make up positions as Burnout F1 has run very wide at the exit of turn number 12. Uh, meanwhile, AOR Reversal uh, grabbing a position off of Snowador, and then it looks like he's going to grab another position off of Snowy's teammate Six Skills as they make the run down towards turn number one. It's your Cupid coming under attack from TRL Martin. Meanwhile, the Flying Finn 
Ryan sitting, waiting in the wings. He's got the DRS. I believe this is the first time in God knows how many laps that the Flying Finn has picked up DRS, and he will be using the slipstream, actually, of the Red Bull. T.R.L. Martin realizes that, though, moves back over to the right-hand side to try and cover off that Williams, bumping into the back of the Red Bull, even, just trying to urge him along as we finish the penultimate lap of this race to start the final lap of this Malaysian Grand Prix. T.R.L. Martin going to move to the right-hand side as he moves up ahead of H.G.R. Cupid. Let's see what the Flying Finn can do. H.G.R. Cupid defends the inside line. Martin, late onto the brakes, is going to take that lead as they start this final lap. H.G.R. Cupid keeping an eye on that Williams driver just behind him. Oh, man, this is getting very, very tense. Uh, T.R.L. Martin starting to pull away now, though. Again, H.G.R. Cupid very low on fuel compared to the other two. Andre BCF 1997, let's see what he can do against T.R.L. Limitless. He's got some spare fuel. He can use some rich mix on the rundown towards turn number one. He's got the DRS open. He's past the Haas into the braking zone for the first corner. It looks like he's going to make that move. Lucky Dog now, uh, excuse me, Lucky Dog 2000 now uh, is uh, looking like he was on the attack on burnout. Having a look now on board with T.R.L. Martin. Martin, the leader of this race for now, as it stands, uh, just one sector remaining as we finish sector two to start sector three, and one through three are nose to tail as we climb the hill through turn number 10 into turn number 11 now, very difficult corner. Looks like all of these guys are gonna navigate it just fine. I'm not sure what Cupid's fuel is looking like, but it does look like the Flying Finn has a little bit spare. He's in standard at the moment, but he's gonna be switching that up into Rich Mix now into the braking zone for turn 14. Let's see what he could do from third position. Can he pick up the slipstream? Will the DRS be enough? Will the will Cupid have enough fuel as they come to the end of the race? It's very, very close. He's on minus 0 0.04. He's going to get side by side with T.R.L. Martin into the braking zone for the final corner. He's got the inside line. Martin is to his right hand side. He's in lean mixture. And here, oh, and he's out of fuel. He's out of fuel. H.C.R. Uh, Cupid is going to finish in third. Martin is going to pick up the win. And it is the Flying Finn who's going to come home in second position. Uh, pending any sort of uh, penalties or anything like that. Wycombs, though, not over for fifth position. He's going to try and go around the outside of Mike Marshmallow here to move himself up into the top five, get a double-digit uh, point scoring position. Mike is squeezing him over to the left-hand side. It's going to be very close, but Mike Marshmallow in the Sauber is going to hold on to that fifth place position. Jason 97F1 is going to finish in ninth behind Tierra Limitless in eighth, and Sayaru is going to pick up the final points paying position despite everything that happened. Uh, probably not Sayaru's best race, uh, probably not his worst race either. I'm sure he's happy just to pick up the one point as, uh, ooh, it looks like the struggles aren't quite over for RS Falcon. Oh, that tire wear though. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. McLaren. Uh, that is going to allow, uh, Giovinazzi to move up into 13th position, but holy cow, what an end to that race, Ali. That was absolutely incredible as Aris Falcon, the unluckiest man in the world has a puncture so I will reverse the second fastest lap of the race but what a banzai into the final corner that was from HCR Cupid unfortunately it didn't mean anything in the end as he ran out of fuel but that must be a, a very bittersweet p3 he must have known how close he was to winning that race but again it's another race win for martin using all his experience he had enough fuel left and he was defending very intelligently the whole race so a pretty deserved victory and the flying fin managing to get his way up into p2 as he always manages to get himself up near the front so again very impressive from the championship leader and again it's pretty much what we expected from this race but look at a replay of this the two cars in front weaving all over the place cupid diving down the inside into the final corner martin trying to go around the outside but I think Cupid possibly could would have won that race had he not run out of fuel there. It would have been a drag race up to the line, and I think he stood a 50-50 chance of winning that. But here we are on board with the broadcast cameras into the final corner again. These cars weaving so much into the braking zone. Very, very dangerous and could have ended horrifically for both of them. But unfortunately, it was Cupid running out of fuel that lost in the race in the end. But regardless, what a finish that was. Yeah, incredible stuff. I mean, uh, Malaysia has really given us a hell of a race. And yet another mixed conditions race here for season 12, which has uh, really been blessed with, with lots of mixed condition races. And Malaysia has been no different. And uh, huge congratulations go out to TRL Martin, who picks up the win by just 0 0.073 seconds, less than a tenth between himself and the Williams. And HCR Cupid in the end, about five seconds down but we all know he was right there with them. Mike Marshmallow in the end, finishing fifth 
with uh, that. No, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. No, uh, Mike had a different strategy, but Wycom's uh, doing well to grab home six. Andre BCF 1997 in seventh. Jason 97 F1 in eighth. TRL Limitless in ninth. And again, say are you the championship contender in 10th position. Limitless with 16 seconds worth of penalties. Uh, that dropped him out of, I believe, what was 7th position or 8th position. Uh, that's really going to hurt him. He's going to lose some points as a result of that one. Six skills, unfortunately, just outside the top 10. No points for the Manor driver on this particular occasion. An AOR reversal bringing home the fastest lap. After what was not his best race for sure, reversal has been pretty consistently in the points all season long, which is uh, how he is in uh, fifth in the championship, or was fifth in the championship. We'll see what happens after the points are tallied for this race. AOR Raikkonen with six seconds worth of penalties. That's not going to have no effect on his 14th position. And in the end, 18 drivers all finishing, and all finishing on the lead lap, uh, which is pretty impressive. So, uh, yeah, a fantastic race. Really well done to all the guys. Uh, Wycoms is the only movement in the top 10 as far as the Drivers' Championship is concerned. Uh, but re the real talking point here, Ali, is now that 95-point gap at the lead. Yeah, the Flying Fin will have the opportunity to win the championship next time out in Japan. So it's going to take, well, it's been a fairly impressive season from the Flying Fin, to say the least. And he is going to be surely wrapping up the title within the next few races. But CRU not having his greatest race today in P2 with almost 100 points behind the Flying Fin. Now, that is a huge deficit with Tiara Martin not that far behind CRU, actually, in P3. And then Cupid in P4 and then Reversal in fifth after... An interesting race today, to say the least. But then uh, Stu, Strees and RS Falcon moving down. And that's pretty much the only change in the championship with Snowy still yet to score a point. Yep, yep. Burnout F1 did score his point. Snowador still has yet to score his point. I think lots of people will be rooting for him. Uh, in the Constructors' Championship, though, that win for TRL Martin is going to move Mercedes up into second. But still a 120-point gap to Williams, so that's going to be wrapped up pretty soon potentially as well, especially if SDSF1 Alonso continues scoring good solid points for the Williams team. Uh, Red Bull now moving up on par with Renault, uh, both with 203 points as it stands right now. Of course, 202 of those Renault points uh, belonging to Sayariu, so uh, well done to him to hold that position in fourth place, which is essentially a tie for third place. Uh, so yeah, that is going to do it for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Again, another mixed conditions race. And coming up next time is going to be Suzuka for the Japanese Grand Prix. Uh, certainly, this is a circuit maybe not as easy to make the overtakes at, um, but this is a definitely a driver favorite, Ali. Yeah, it should be another great race in Japan. And obviously, the championship could be wrapped up there. So it should be another crack at it. And make sure you join us for that one. Thank you very much to Justin for having me today. It was an absolute blast. Oh, it was it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining and for uh, filling in the large shoes that x G has left behind. Again, we wish him all of the best. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you ever so much for watching. And we'll see you next time for the Japanese Grand Prix.